Well, welcome to Bulls and Bears, where we look for the arbitrage opportunity in ASX-listed companies that are doing interesting things. I'm Matt Burney, and I'm delighted to be joined in the Bulls and Bears Perth studio tonight by Chris Kane, the Managing Director of ASX-listed fintech company Peppermint Innovation. Evening, Chris. Hi, Matt. How are you? Very well, thank you. The term fintech, or financial technology company, is often thrown around loosely when describing technology companies. Perth-based Peppermint Innovation, however, fits the bill perfectly in every sense of the word. Peppermint have developed two software platforms that have manifested themselves in the form of mobile apps that have made significant inroads into the massive Philippines market. One is being used or white-labelled by a number of the big Filipino banks to provide mobile banking services for their customers. The other allows the tens of millions of Filipinos that still don't operate a bank account, believe it or not, to transfer money to family and friends and to pay their bills with their mobile phone, even without a bank account. The two technology products can be distilled down to one that operates for the banking sector and one that operates for the non-bank sector in the Philippines for now. Chris, firstly, can I ask you a little bit about your software? Uh, wh what is it? What does it do? And, and who do you work for in the Philippines? Sure. Essentially, our product is a mobile banking app, not unlike the banking app that you might use if you're a Westpac account holder or a Commonwealth Bank account holder. In the Philippines, currently, we provide a mobile banking app or platform to three Tier 1 banks, Union Bank, Metro Bank, UCPB, which allows their account holders using our technology platform to transfer money between their accounts or other accounts within the bank to pay their bills or to buy e-load, which is mobile airtime for their mobile phone. So how many people would be using it? Currently we've got about 240,000 registered users. Uh, last quarter that translated to 5.6 million transactions and equated actually to a 25% increase in revenue for the quarter. Mm. How do you make money from something like this? The way we make money is each time an account holder clicks on the application at each one of those banks, we get a fee. So it's a per click fee, if you like. So if they look up their account balance, we get a fee. If they decide to pay their bills via the application, we also get a fee. Or if they decide to buy some mobile airtime through the e-load functionality, we also get a fee. So how does a small Perth-based company convince major banks in the Philippines that they firstly have the smarts and secondly can comply with the Filipino banking system? Mm. So the banking platform we're currently running is a legacy for, and an incarnation of a, a former company that we listed back in 2015. Um, what we've done and what gives us heart with that platform is it's been through the Independent Von Vulnerability and Penetration Testing, or VAPT, to establish security integrity for the regulators, the banks and customers alike. What it allows us to do is to provide a technology platform and prove to the banking community and the wider community in the Philippines that we have the know-how and the smarts, we can run a compliance system that is easily used and adopted by consumers. So Chris, I, I know you've got a number of strings to the bow at Peppermint. Do you see this software, that is your banking software, as being the future for Peppermint? We don't see ourselves as a software service provider to the banks moving forward. We see ourselves as providing significant functionality into the financial transaction value chain. What we mean by that is providing services that capitalises on financial services gateways. Um, so, so gateways, can you just explain to me what you mean by gateway? Every electronic transaction that takes place has to go through a theoretical gateway. Um, for instance, if you pay a bill, it has to go through a gateway. What we're aiming to do, and it's a natural evolution of what we've done with a proven banking software platform, is to provide the functionality that allows those gateway services to be provided. And so just to put me in the picture a little bit, so when you say gateway, you're talking about uh, when money moves from, from one individual or one organisation to another, you provide the, the technical, or, or you're looking to provide the technical switching opportunity for that money to switch from one client to the other. Is that, is that what you're saying? Correct. Uh, and, fun and fundamentally, we're already doing that with the services that we provide the banks. That is providing bill payment services, e-load services and also money transfer services. So what we're doing, we're just breaking down and providing an individual uh, functionality, if you like, as opposed to a combined platform. So Chris, I, I guess if I'm understanding you correctly, what you're, what you're saying is that you see the evolution for Peppermint as being 
uh, from a company that's currently providing software services to the banking community to somebody who is actually part of that financial value chain. Would that be an accurate way of putting it? That's correct, mate. Yes. Right. And I know, uh, I, I can see, in fact, why uh, you're in the Philippines with a, a population of 100 million people. It's, it's quite understandable. But what I do find interesting about the Philippines is that they have a massive number of people that still don't operate a bank account, don't they? Absolutely. It, it is. It's quite amazing. Up to 70 million people of the population in the Philippines, or, or over 70 per cent, do not operate a bank account which is quite foreign for us in a developed world country here in Australia. So how do they pay their bills, for instance? Well, everything's done in cash. There's a real culture of cash in the Philippines. So people are paid in cash. People have to travel to pay utilities in cash on a counter or travel to a bank to pay something in cash. They have to transfer money. They have to go to these bricks and mortar outlets, uh, which can be quite uh, time consuming and inconvenient for them. And I must say, during the week, I took a look at your other piece of uh, software or technology, uh, which is for that non-banked sector, isn't it? Um, can you tell us a little bit about that piece of technology and how it might actually assist these uh, bus-hopping, counter-leaning people that have to drive across town to pay their bills uh, in circumstances where they don't have a bank account? Absolutely. It's actually also the opportunity for those entrepreneurial types to adopt our app, our non-bank app, to provide bill payment services, e-load services, and also money transfer services to people where they are. So how does that work? So it's all done via a, an application on a smartphone again, via a peppermint, a peppermint agent. So the peppermint agent might live in your apartment block, they, you might know them from the coffee shop, they might be coming to your front door. While they're there potentially providing other services or delivering other services, they can also offer bill pay, e-load or transfer money services. To people that don't operate a bank account? Correct. Correct. That's Have right. you had much success in appointing Peppermint agents? We well, are. Yeah, currently, we are conducting three pilot programs with three established agent networks in the Philippines who are running our non-bank mobile payments and remittance application. The idea of those pilot programs is to effectively make them user-friendly, make them technically robust before we look to a full commercial launch at the end of this year. Additionally, we're working and in discussions with a number of other multi-level marketing firms or established agent networks, uh, and we hope to keep shareholders up to date on our progress of that very shortly. What's the size of the market in the Philippines? Do you have any, or are there any stats out there in terms of you know, how many payments are made, what the value is, that sort of thing? Absolutely, and that's the attraction to the payments market in the Philippines. It's the sheer size of it. It's estimated that there's 2.5 billion payments made every month, valued at over 74 billion US dollars. Right. Currently, only 1% of those are done electronic electronically. The rest is in cash or check. Okay. So there's a huge opportunity to provide basic payment services via a mobile app that is secure and convenient to the people to where they are rather than requiring them to, after a long day at work, sit in a bus for two hours to go to a utility or to go to a, a payment centre, which may in fact be closed by the time they get there. And I guess the Philippines is only the tip of the spear. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that there are a number of developing countries out there who, who also have a large non-banked community. Would that be a correct assumption? Absolutely, yeah. The, the, the concept of people not holding a bank account in developing worlds is very common. Mm. And it absolutely is our intention to make our non-bank platform, if you like, commercially robust in the Philippines before we look to expand in in like-for-like like developing world countries. So Chris, you've got a fair bit going on within Peppermint. Where do you see the company in three, four, five years time? Look Matt, we have a very clear vision at Peppermint. We want to maintain our legacy banking platform to create a baseload income. We want to enter and dominate the payment gateway services to create an annuity style income. And we really see the blue sky in our non-bank payment and remittance app. Look, there's no doubt that mobile payments are dominating the market these days, and, and I'm assuming, no doubt, you've done some research as to just how big that mobile payments market is. Can you share any statistics with us? I can. It's globally, the mobile payments market is expected to increase in value to 1.3 trillion US dollars in five years time. So you don't need a big slice of that to make money, do you? We don't need a big slice, and the thing with Peppermint is we're well positioned with a proven technology in a good location to take advantage of some of that market. Uh, Chris Kane, uh, Managing Director of Peppermint Innovation, thanks very much for joining us in the Perth Bulls and Bears studio tonight. Thank you, Matt.
If you'd like to learn more about Peppermint Innovation, their stock code is PIL. Their share price doubled this month from a low of 0.7 of a cent to a high of 1.4 cents before settling back to around 1.1 cents more recently. I'm Matt Burney and you've been watching Bulls and Bears. For more Bulls and Bears stories, go to the West Australian newspaper website at thewest.com.au and click the Business tab, followed by the Public Companies tab.